Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the eMudra Limited Q3 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Dollar Capital. As a reminder, all participants' clients will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pranab Mashruwala from Dollar Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Greetings, everything. Good day and welcome to QC FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Dollar Capital. We have with us Senior Management of e Mudra on the call. Mr. Venkat Raman Srinivasan, Executive Chairman. Mr. Saji K. Lewis, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Kaushik Srinivasan, Senior Vice President, Product Development. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Venkat Raman Srinivasan for his initial remarks. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. And thank you. Uh, good evening to all of you. Welcome all of you to our Q3 FY23 earning conference call. Uh, thank you for taking time out and then joining this call. The earning presentation is available on our company website as well as on the stock exchange portals. We ho hope you have had a chance to review it. Then I will begin with company overview. I would like to briefly summarize the company overview for all the participants. Imudra is a company engaged in trust services, digital identity, digital transformation, authentication, and cyber security solution. Within this, we offer a wide range of services and solutions, including digital signature solutions, identity solutions, e-authentication, paperless workflow solutions, accessing authority solutions, etc. Over the years, we have grown to become a leading provider of digital signature solutions and cyber security solutions in India. Imudra has a strong presence in the Indian market and is also establishing its footprint in the global market. We have several accreditations such as ISO, CMMA Level 5 certification, EAL 4 Plus certification, and several other certifications. We are recently recognized as a great place to work by the Great Place to Work Institute, which is a confirmation on our organization culture and the faith that the employees have reposed on us. So now we will proceed to review our recent quarterly performance. We are pleased to announce that we have maintained strong financial performance in Q3 FY 2023, and we intend to sustain the growth in the future as well. Our revenue for the quarter was rupees 624 million, a substantial increase of 39% year on year, a significant increase in the enterprise solution business contributed to the growth in revenue. And I would like to present the key highlights and projects wins of Yimudra for Q3 FY23. One, Yimudra ranked number one under identity and digital trust category in H1 2022 in IDC report dated October 2022. Yimudra currently holds 13.3% market share in India on the digital trust and identity category and is ranked first among 48 named Indian vendors in terms of revenue during H1 2022, January to June. E Mudra, in association with IDC, organized a close to a round table in Nairobi, Kenya, which was very well attended by senior leadership representing regulators, government, banking, energy, and the telecom industry, and it has generated a good interest and leads. We have been mentioned in Gartner Voice of the Customer Report for Electronic Signatures, <coughs> which was published on 30th December 2022. We have launched a trust service in Kenya with focus on driving adoption of digital signatures in the initial set of use cases in e-governance and BFSI. And we have acquired a significant customer, which is a large state-owned NTIT, there is a trust service and e-stamping provider in the Indonesian market for driving e-signature and e-stamping use cases with the introduction of mobile-based digital signatures in the Indonesian market. This is a very significant win in the Indonesian market. We have rolled out our certificate discovery product, which was one of the product any at the time of the public issue for a very large public sector bank in India 
that will enable key and certificate life cycle management across users, devices, etc., allowing the bank to secure their infrastructure using PKA technology. So we are confident in our future success due to our focus on providing digitally secure solution and its decade of it, and our decade of experience in the rapidly evolving technology market. The expertise and commitment to digital security has helped us to maintain a leadership position in the industry and it has given us the ability to expand our market reach both domestically and internationally. This experience would be an asset to us as we pursue new business opportunities and it would be beneficial to our customers as they are able to provide up-to-date and secure solutions. May I now request Mr. Saji Lewis, CFO, take us through the financial performance of the company. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon to all the participants. Let me first take you through the headline numbers. Our total revenue for Q3 of SI 2023 grew by 39% on year-on-year -year basis to 624 million. The enterprise solution segment contributed most to this growth. Our nine-month FI23 operational revenue shows a growth of 25% on year-on-year -year basis to Rs. 1,719 million. Our EBITDA for Q3 of FI2023 is uh, Rs. 224 million, a year-on-year -year growth of 27% with a margin of 36%. The growth and margin improvement were driven by the enterprise solution segment and operational efficiencies. Our profit after tax grew by 46% on year on year basis to Rs 152 million with a margin of 24%. Our nine month FI23 EBITDA and net profit were Rs 667 million with a margin of 38% and Rs 454 million with a margin of 26% respectively. We remain dedicated to adding value to our stakeholders. We are committed to delivering high quality services and are confident in our ability to continue growing and expanding our business. We are now open to answering any questions you may have about this recent performance. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles to ask a question. Please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have a first question from the line of Vivek Setia with HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. So, just a few questions with regards to the operating metrics for trust services and enterprise machines. Like, if you could provide the breakup of channel partners and customers for growth uh, for both trust services and enterprise, as well as within enterprise India and global. Yes, you see the breakup, one is the number and the number of partners and the retail customers. If you see the number of partners, the number of partners go to almost 1,6,000 or 1,7,000 partners. And the retail customer, again, it grows to almost 2,36,000 retail customers. But because this retail customers, it has a different kind of product mix. That's why this time in the presentation we didn't put because we thought it was not making much sense to just to put the number of retail customers, otherwise retail customer is grown. And also retail revenue, if you see, uh, last quarter, la this uh, Q3 FY23 to Q3 FY23, uh, 22, almost 31% retail uh, revenue growth has been there. So that's why continuously retail revenue growth is happening. On the partner side of the trust service also, I'll brief you in terms of the numbers. So if you see, though the number of partners increased and also the Number of digital signatures have increased by around 10 to 15 percent from the channel business, uh, but the price has considerably declined. Almost, if you see, over one year, price declined by almost 35 percent because the existing other uh, uh, certifying authority also reduced, and the four or five new certifying authorities have also come. 
So they have also gone ahead and reduced the prices, so it has reduced by almost 35 percent. So the 35 percent reduction has been taken care of by 31 percent increase in the retail. Then the other thing is almost the accessible business has really started. So almost in this quarter we could go, do almost four crore of accessible business. And the other thing is the e-pain and e-stamping business has also picked up. So while there was a 35% drop in the price of the conventional digital signature business that is compensated by the increase in retail, increase in SSL business and the increase in the e-signature and e-stamping business. That's why the overall revenue from trust services, it almost remained at a similar level of 21-22 uh, crore and maybe even in the next quarter, I don't think much increase will happen in the trust services business because the newer strategy authority may further reduce the price by 10 15 percent but we are very confident that it will be offset by the further growth in the ssl business and also in the e sign business so that's why the trust service business uh, as a component of the overall business has not increased and it may almost remain or little bit more than the last year level so this is on the trust service business Okay, uh, so on the trust services side, how do you see this uh, mix panning up like in terms of DSC and SSL, if you could just uh, repeat that part? So DSC, if you see, last year SSL business was not at all there. Yes. Because around last November, December only, we got all the accreditations and the enrollment in the Apple and all that thing. So now then we started recruiting the people for the SSL, we have put a department in place and all that. So that's where even in India and globally it has started improving. So over time, what will happen? The retail DSC definitely it is increasing. Then the SSL will increase, e saying e stamping will increase, but the conventional DSC sold through the channel. There also volume may not decrease, but due to pricing, the overall revenue may decrease. So that's where the mix will change. Okay. So these competitors which you spoke about that have uh, come up. Uh, like what you said about the re reduction in revenue from channel partners, are these uh, like domestic or are these global? No, they are domestic only because this uh, Indian digital signature business is fully run by the domestic people only. They okay. are small, small companies which are come domestically, not from the global people. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, I'll be I'll be back in the queue. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants, if you wish to ask a question at this time, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone. Participants who wishes to ask a question at this time, press star one now. We have next question from the line of Abhishek Agarwal with Naredi Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for um, giving me opportunity to ask a question. So first question, what is the client retention, retention ratio in test, trust service and enterprise solution? The client retention ratio in trust service is very good because the Overall, the number of customer retained is very high and also the volume of the digital signature service has increased by 10 to 15 percent. The key issue is the price because of the competition. So that way there is no problem with the client retention ratio. Similarly, on the enterprise solution also, the client, all the clients have been retained almost it is more than 96, 97 percent and new client has also been added. So retention ratio has not been a problem. Okay, and the uh, second question, what is the contribution of retail in trust service? In retail, if you see, the contribution was 30% in the last year. 70% in terms of revenue was coming from the channel and 30% from the retail. So now what has happened is almost it has become kind of 55-45 kind of thing. If you take only the conventional DSC business, uh, the SSL business and other things are different. Because the, the, the conventional DSC, the channel revenue, the per unit realization has reduced, so that's why the percentage has significantly shifted in favor of retail. Okay. And sir, uh, how many digital signatures will be issued in this quarter, and uh, how many of these are uh, retail digital signatures? Because uh, in retail digital signature, our gross profit margin is higher. Yes. 
So generally, if you see the per quarter, almost around five and a half, six lakh digital signatures are issued. So out of that, almost you can say some thirty thousand to thirty-five thousand signatures are retail signatures. So this is what generally happens. So now, because the retail is growing, it could be forty, forty-five thousand, and also now we have started issuing the retail in China also. So that could be another five, six thousand. And the conventional channel signature, which is issued, is out of the five, five and a half lakh. If you reduce this forty thousand balance, that's five lakh or four lakh ninety thousand conventional channel digital signature will happen. But there, the price has, as I said, has reduced. Okay. And sir, last question: What kind of uh, EBITDA margin are you expecting in Q4 and uh, next financial year, FY24? So for Q4, we expect to maintain the current EBITDA margin, so should not be a problem. But one thing is, for the next year, FY24, we are also trying to grow this US market, grow a lot of other foreign markets. So we are recruiting. We have recruited a US market head. We are recruiting five, six sales people there. We are recruiting some people in Kenya. Then we are recruiting people in Saudi Arabia everywhere. So because of that, the salary cost may increase and other. Office maintenance costs may increase, and that may, but those may not lead to immediate. It will lead to result, but there could be a three months, six months lag or a little more lag. So that's why the EBITDA margin next year could reduce by one or two percent, but I don't think. And similarly, the product sales also may increase, but uh, but taking a mix of both, there could be some reduction of a two three percent, but I don't think a major reduction will happen. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Ravi Mehta with Deep Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, on the pricing front, are you seeing uh, the retail prices holding up or uh, some pressure there? No, no. Retail price is holding up. There is no problem because it's fair. At the retail level, it is not a DSC, it is not a price sensitive product. It is only this major channel partner through whom all the competitors, certifying authorities are trying to sell. That's where they are applying reverse pressure to reduce the price. Whereas the retail, the other people are not selling direct retail. Mostly, we are the only people selling direct retail. And at the retail level, it's a once in a two year product and used generally by director, company secretary. Uh, and CFO like that, so that trade is not a very price sensitive product. So retail prices are definitely holding. Up. And any lever to increase that to offset margin pressures is it possible? Yeah, yeah, that is what we are trying. That's why, as I said, uh, 31 percent has um, uh, increase in retail business has happened. But because of the reduction in the channel price, considerable reduction, as I said, 31 percent. It has offset the reduction to some extent, but it has not increased the margin. So that's what has happened. So, so, so the retail revenue has not reduced, and retail alone had increased. Probably it would have increased the EBITDA margin, which has not happened because of the offset. Correct. Uh, but just small clarification: the retail revenue that grew by 31 percent as per your opening commentary uh, is that fully volume driven, or there is some price uh, element also into it? Mainly volume driven. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah, sure. And another question was on the enter enterprise side. So we were expecting a good uptick in M signer uh, as a product, uh, yeah. but but probably looking at the Q3 numbers, looks like uh, the uptick has not yet come. So uh, any, any directionally, any uh, roadmap on that? You know, lot of uptick has happened. So almost if you see, uh, ESS India from 17 crore it has gone to 22 crore. Within a quarter, which is a significant increase, and in the foreign geography also increase there. But because the last quarter went from 9 crore to 19 crore, almost more than 100 percent growth. Comparatively, this pro this quarter appears a little lower, but otherwise, good uptake is there. And even in American market, we have penetrated Indonesian market, we have penetrated. So when we see just quarter to quarter, little bit aberration happens, but overall, lot of uptake is there. Uh, And some color across the products in the enterprise side, like uh, EMAS and M Signer and MCA. So uh, EMAS is only going in the Indian market. That continues to go in the Indian market. 
Young China, a lot of wins in the Middle East African market and also a good win in the US market has happened. In Indonesia also we have won some one big company uh, that has already won, but that revenue may be realized in the next quarter, not in the last quarter. So Young China has uh, almost 50 to 60 percent cost, it cost to Young China. Then MCA also a lot of wind is happening in the defense section and and also in the foreign, some of the foreign countries is MCA mainly. So that way on both the segments there is a good uptake. And in this segment there is no pricing uh, pressure or any competitive? No, 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 no. It's only in the uh, DSC? Only in the DSC, yes. Sure. Okay, okay. Thanks. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants, if you wish to ask a question at this time, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the lineup Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, and thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my um, question is on the pricing aspect for the trust services. So uh, you know, uh, in terms of the retail pricing and the channel you know, pricing, what the difference in terms of the retail and channel pricing and as the channel pricing has dipped uh, significantly so uh, has this uh, you know have we seen such kind of uh, pressure earlier also from the channel or is it the first time we are seeing this competition here you know earlier also we have seen you see the last six seven years the price varied from so so much it varied so if you see 10 years back it was even 2000 rupees then from there it went down to 300 rupees, then went down to 185, then went down to 125, then almost it became kind of unviable level, then everybody joined and then again increased to 375. From 375 again came to around 250 kind of level, at an average level when we were doing the public issue. So after that four more, four or five more certifying authorities have come and to penetrate in the market though, now they are reducing the prices. So that's where they are going down and going down by 35-40%. I, I think maybe in one or two more quarters they may even go down a little more, which we have to fight and then over time it will become unviable and some of the settling authority will move out. So like that, it, in cycles this happens. It is not the first time. Okay. So uh, no, no, just to understand better, so in terms of the issuing authority who like are able to issue this, uh, licenses uh, through the chat through the channel partner network so what are the entry barriers mm -hmm. and what are the kind of companies uh, uh, which are coming in and selling it at a lower price and what is the you uh, know our pricing in terms of uh, 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 till like what level the pricing can actually go in and the pricing war will you know settle at you uh, know at, at uh, you know what pricing level so that's what i want to understand in terms of what extent it can go Currently, you see, when we were doing this prospectus and exercise, the price was around 250, we had taken around 245. Now the price has gone to around 160 kind of level. And earlier, if you see three years, four years back, prices had gone down up to 110 level. And then again, shot up to 375. So I feel still it can go down to 110, 120 level also is possible. So, which, which is what we should be ready and then we should uh, give the full competition to them and then at that level, some three, four of them who are very small and do not have the numbers may move, then again the price can increase. Okay. And uh, no, it may not significantly affect us because to that extent we will definitely shift in the retail and our enterprise increase will also compensate for that decline also. And, uh, no, can there be a reverse shift that retail can shift to the channel network because the pricing because of the huge, huge pricing difference? Is there any like difference in terms of the offerings uh, oh, if yeah. anyone buys directly and through channel? I will explain this to you, then you can understand. In the channel, what is happening? There is a first level partner called RA, then there is a second level partner called the sub RA. Then there are third, sub themselves are several times chartered accountant, then there is a third level who are chartered on company salary. Then in the fourth level is the retail. The first level in the country itself, there are some party people. So who are commanding and all the certifying authority just to try to sell to those party 50 people in a big way. Then the next level, they sell not so much directly to the next level, third level, which is what we are attempting. So from the first level to second level, 
there will be some pricing reduction but from the second level to third level and to the end level generally there is no price reduction so the price reduction so even in the last 7 8 years and the prices have varied from 100 rupees to even some 400 500 and again come back to 300 and again at, the, at whatever time the end user prices remained at 1500 to 2000 only so it is not translating into the end user price only okay and sir in in terms of the enterprise solutions business so uh, how our enterprise business is linked to the it services uh, you know, uh, you know like growth and uh, you know the slowdown that we have seen in the enterprise solutions outside so is there uh, you know in it, it, uh, obviously it has you know, increased significantly in the last two quarter that has come off but is it an indicator that uh, you know the slowdown in the it services globally and it will have an impact on this uh, revenue segment no no it service and this may not have any impact if at all due to budgetary constraint the new product expenditure they reduce then it can have a but our product are all really by getting into our product they save lot of money so that's why i don't think the postponement of decision will happen and in the last quarter again though because the previous quarter was 100% growth there is a little bit reduction in the last quarter it is not that the growth has slowed down or anything but because the revenue booking also is based on the when you are delivering then when you have completed these various other things are there so that's where it is on the overall trend wise we are very sure from last year 36 37 crore this year we may reach almost 16 and 17 crore so on that there is no doubt at all on the international business so it may not it may not follow the it services pressure or anything like that. okay so on a on a steady state basis what can be the growth uh, that we can expect uh, from the enterprise uh, business and also in terms of the geographical expansion that you uh, are planning so which uh, you know geographies you are seeing the highest potential in terms of uh, expanding the enterprise business no we have been whatever growth rate we have been growing at 37 40% so uh, the enterprise business we feel that much growth is possible okay thank you i'll i'll continue back in the queue yeah. thank you i remind the participants if you wish to ask a question please press star followed by one on your touch tone phone now We have next question from the line of Tushar Sarda with Athena Investments please go ahead. Yeah thank you for the opportunity. Can you hear me clearly? Yes sir. Okay. I am uh, just going through your presentation. I am not uh, studying the company in great detail previously. Uh, but what I see is that your trust services are not growing as much as the uh, enterprise solution and also the India business seems to have flattened out. Uh, whereas international is growing very fast, so if you can explain this to me, I, I joined the call a little late, so if you have already explained, uh, my apologies. Yeah, yeah, I already explained. In India, I will repeat. The I'm sorry, is- so sorry. There are too many calls going on. So. And the trust service, there are two things. One is the main digital thing, conventional digital signature, which is sold through channel and sold through retail. In the what is sold through channel. in the last one year there has been about 35% price reduction so that's where even in spite of a volume increase of 10 to 15% there is a overall reduction in the trust uh, the bsc business which is sold through chan this got compensated by a 31% increase in retail and also some amount of ssl business and the e-sign business so that's why the overall trust service business almost remains stagnant over the Uh, last two quarter and also stagnant compared to the early area. So this is what is in the trust services business. And again, what I explained is the trust service through channel there could be further price reduction. But with that, with our retail increase and the SSL increase and the e-sign increase, we we are poised to maintain the overall trust service business. It may not grow in a big way, but it may not decrease also. So this is what I explained earlier. then coming to the enterprise business enterprise business in india also it has grown and abroad also it has grown so if you see india year on year from almost 147 million it has grown to 222 million which is almost 50% growth over the one year 
Similarly, in abroad also, in one year from 94 million, it has grown to 169 million, which is a good growth. Even nine months to nine months basis, there is a considerable growth in the India business as well as the overseas business. So, the enterprise business, there is no problem on the growth from the enterprise business. Okay. So, uh, what is uh, the growth we expect in enterprise business going forward? Will it continue the same growth rate? Yes, yes. Almost in the last few years, we have grown at 38-40%. I think similar growth should be possible. Okay. And who are your main competitors and what is your market share in the enterprise business? So, the enterprise is a very large business So and predominant competitors are global competitors. And there is no specific, this is the, uh, the total value of the market or something like that. So that's why the value of the market is also huge. And uh, if you see segment wise, the competition is different. If you see the paperless workflow solution, DocuSign and Adobe is the competition. And then if you see the uh, CA solution, there is a Nexus and then there is a train key and then one more interest, they are the competition. And then if you see the authentication solution, there is a solution called Alstar and those kind of solutions are the competition. So in different, different segment, different, different competition. And if you see conventional digital signature, it is predominantly Indian competition, which is the, there are other certifying authorities such as SIFI, then Penta Science, then there is a Veracis, Capricorn. So these people are the competitors. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on your touchstone phone now. We have a next question from the line of Worship Shah with Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, I cannot share this, but your own, why is it in a very hard, uh, sharp increase in operating expenses and other expenses? This is what you do and get the margins falling. We just uh, teach you some color on that. Yeah, because uh, as I explained earlier, we are trying to grow the international market. So we have set up an office in U.S. and we have had a head for the U.S. market. Then we have hired some same people there. Then we have created a, 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 a the, our office in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kenya, and all this. So we have hired people there. So because of all this and also strengthening the setup in India to back our international market, that's why these costs have increased. But these will have the corresponding effects. Maybe there may be a lag of six months, lag of nine months, but the effect will be felt at that time. So that's where the, the costs have increased and EBITDA margin is slightly low. Thank you. Have there been anchor or will there increase going forward as you try to grow in these markets? What is it? So all these costs have they already been affected been incurred, but will they increase further as we try to grow in these markets? Cost will increase, correspondingly revenue will also increase. That's right. We have only started all these geographies. Now in all these geographies, when the revenue further and further increase, we have to put more people. But that will be taken care of by the revenue. All right. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone now. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Gautam Rathi with CWC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, uh, so we understand, you know, the enterprise business is, is, is the large part of your growth driver going forward, right? When you think three, five years out, um, and that is also the exciting part of the business. But get, so, and one of the previous calls, uh, I guess, uh, a couple of quarters back, you had explained a large part of the revenue today in the enterprise business is, is more of licensing, right? Where you give the solutions on-prem. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's like a 80% is, is one time and then 20% is something which is like a, a growth on top or a maintenance kind of thing. Right. So yeah. can you, uh, and, and so can you just help me understand a few things around it? One is, uh, there, there was a focus, a clear focus by the company to move more and more customers towards the cloud journey, right? Instead of giving on-prem solutions towards the cloud, uh, cl uh, cloud based, uh, cloud based solution, which you have. 
So uh, can you give some uh, color around it? Or what's the proportion of incremental customers coming on the cloud pl platform versus on-prem today? No, incremental number of customers on cloud uh, coming will be high. But this, in terms of the revenue, the conventional license model will be better because in license model, in several foreign jurisdictions, the same sign -up. We still starting from two hundred thousand dollar to sometimes four hundred five hundred thousand dollar, but the cloud customer it will be some hundred three dollar two hundred dollar per year kind of thing per customer. So that's where the I think in the cloud we have now got some fifteen hundred to two thousand customers, but that will not still be a very significant revenue. But in the cloud another model we are trying in America is that. For a large customer, private cloud model where yearly license we get so that there will be a recurring revenue also. But at the same time, uh, the enterprise as such uses this cloud in a private way. So there also the revenue could be more. So in our first customer, per year we got $300,000 revenue in that model. So that's how depending on the model it will fluctuate. In the cloud, what will happen? The number of customers could be very high. But the revenue may not be as high until we reach a very big year. Uh, <clears throat> number. All right, right. And and how do you guys internally think uh, going forward, right? When you think about the next three five years, uh, do you do you really want to be uh, more of an on-prem uh, uh, player, or do you want to uh, move shift more towards the uh, the cloudification journey for for your customers? Uh, to be both because this our industry, two things are there. Main DFS industry want on-prem or private cloud. So they don't want to get into public cloud because of the regulatory reason and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are having a strategic advantage because we have built a specific BFSA version, which is not there with the DocuSign or the Adobe and all that other companies. Right, right. So this right. industry most probably may go to private cloud or uh, the on-premise, but the other industries can go to the general cloud. So that's where we are trying to capture both the industries by offering different things. So over time, it may be, we, we, we may not be able to fully shoot, but it may get into a still 60% uh, on premise and private cloud and 30 40% public cloud. Understood, understood, understood. So just, just the reason why I, I wanted to understand is the, the, the part which is on prem is, is more of a, a, a one time business, right? For a, for a five years and then you need to keep on adding customers every year to to get the growth in that business. Whereas the 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 licensing uh, the the cloud would be more of a recurring kind of nature. That is why I just wanted to understand this better. And also a disadvantage is that now in lot of cloud you can pull from one cloud into yeah. it computer exactly. cloud also. So that yeah. also has stickiness is lower. Yeah. Under, under. It's true. Further add, even in the on-prem licensing, we put restrictions on the number of users. Yeah. Okay. They add more departments, more users. They typically have to buy more licenses, even in the on-prem. So, uh, uh, okay. Can you help us understand if 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 you want to give a, a cohort customer cohort, right? Uh, uh, how does this generally move? So, if they have bought a hundred hundred uh, rupee product today, uh, so how does this customer, when you retain it over the next three, four, five years, how does this journey? And so 100 goes to 20 next year, and then you keep on adding products to take it to back to say some 40, 50 level, or how does it happen? No, no, initially they won't go, even on an on-premise model, they may not go for all the departments together. They may go for one department. So that is say they spend $200,000. Then they may go on adding many departments, so that itself may go to our first bank in Middle East, almost from, went from $200,000 to more than $1.5 million. Mm -hmm. So okay. the it increases. Very few people stop with what they have and only 20% maintenance they give, but number of almost 50, 50% 50 people go for additional license, go for additional country, initially opt for one country, then go for multiple country. So that's that really the reason. So I understand this, this is the journey which you are saying, right? So can you give some numbers around it, like a net retention ratio, which, uh, or, or, or a similar number, uh, year on year, how does it move? A customer cohort, rather than a customer which we are taking as an example, if you just take a, a cohort of all the customers during the year, how does that move? If, if you can give some numbers around it. So for, from existing customers, how much revenue increase and how much is new, like that? Right, right. Like over the years, right? Maybe they will, I cannot readily give that okay. number. We will okay. prepare and then... Maybe, maybe, yeah, I can correct offline. Fair. Okay. So, uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on the attached on phone now. Participants who wishes to ask a question, may press star one now. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star followed by one. Hello. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Hello. Uh, yes, Pranav, you may please go and ask your question. Sure. And uh, please speak close to your mic, sir. Your audio is not coming very clear. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so, this uh, could you uh, help us uh, give some more light on some of the new products that are under development and what stage they are and when can we expect the uh, launch them? Yeah, three new products we envisage in the prospectus. If you see, one is the certificate discovery product, and the second is the IoT certificate product, and the third is the remote signing product. In this the certificate discovery product almost developed fully. Fully in the sense maybe 90 95% developed, and with the demo and POC everything phone, we have got a first large win also. So one of the large public sector banks in India which has uh, given the order for this particular uh, certificate discovery product. So with that, we hope a number of, and also one or two other large companies are in the pipeline for such product. So with that, we feel that from the next quarter, we will be able to sell those products and then get revenue out of this product. Then the second product is IoT certificate and then the remote signing product, they are all, they are all in uh, development, so they may take another three to four months to develop. So most probably by April, May of this year, those can be launched. So uh, and we've identified the target market, target markets, and target clients for these products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Target client set is small, and once the product is ready, then we can market that. Even for the certificate discovery product, the uh, target client is known, and we have already started marketing to the target clients. Okay. And uh, already so started on... integrating our uh, this discovery product with our M thing, so that once it is discovered, the certificate expiry is discovered, it will automatically it can also enable sales from the M thing. So those, that process also started now. Sure, sure. Uh, and so on some of the, some of the existing products that we have, there are any new use cases that we can uh, think of or try and market uh, to have a, another potential kind of activity? So, let's help us now. Get your question clearly. Uh, if, uh, for some of the existing products, do we have developed any new use cases uh, or a Let's say maybe in some another industry. Yeah. No, no, that's a continuous process. So okay. new and newer use cases for the existing products are also done. And along with the existing product, the new product is also not a completely different line. It's within the same line only. The same for the cyber security and digital transformation line only is also that. So that way this will also complement the existing products. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's what we're going Thank you. We have next question from the line of Sarang Sanil with RW Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I believe you said that the Q4 margin would be in the same range as Q3, which is about 36%, right? Yeah. Uh, so around, around that, exactly, nobody can predict it. And <laughs> we can say it should be around that. <laughs> Uh, no, sir, I asked this because uh, in Q2 called the guidance was that, you know, in H2 we'll have 38 to 40% uh, 
margin and i understand the operating expenses went up because we are setting up offices in different countries and joining different people right uh so i want to understand so we would be uh, below 40% this year on the margin front right yeah yeah uh and one more thing i believe uh, that our margin would improve it is it is better we have retail for services enterprise and outside india businesses growing and yeah. less of channel partner so sure two parts that is enterprise and outside uh, india has been growing very well but still our margin has been disappointing somewhat disappointing but going forward you would have the same strategy right grow the uh-huh. retail enterprise and outside india i believe no oh, those they are growing as i said the channel the price in channel has fallen down by 35% In spite of the 35% reduction in price in the channel, we have been able to maintain the margin around it. So that's what one has to include that also. No? If if that reduction had not happened, so this profit would have been much much higher. Got it. Because we have volatile pricing in the uh, channel partners, we are uncertain about the margin guidance and also maybe on the revenue front because of the pricing. but going forward you would want independent yeah yeah going forward you want the enterprise and outside india business also to grow faster right correct correct okay and also the retail dsc yeah right right i understand i understand okay so any price hike that you would be taking because we all already have a uh, pricing premium uh, over domestic players in the retail side of dsc would you be willing to take any more price hike no price hike we will not take at this stage we will try to more aggressively to sell to retail to increase the number rather than price hike okay sir okay so the same strategy as volume over value okay. okay sir thank you thank you thank you thank you to ask a question participants can press star 1 on their touchstone phone now we have next question from the line of gautam rati with cwc please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the follow up uh, just wanted to understand one more thing so in your presentation you 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 call out that you work with uh, 10 out of the top 10 banks right in india for the e sign product so just wanted to understand when when you think of your car different different, different product okay it's for different products yeah right maybe for e mart product in some bank same uh, sign product different product okay. Okay, so when generally these banks work with you, if if I take a product which is e-sign, right? If if a bank is working with you for e-sign, so is it that you are the sole uh, 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 sole supplier for e-sign for that bank, or is there multiple uh, uh, players also with the bank, and they have this wallet share concept? How, how does that work? They may take multiple players. Okay. Everybody, because banks are all bigger entity, they don't want to depend on single supplier. Correct. Correct. So they may take up NSB and also, or there is another company who are who are reselling the NSB and these signatures. So mm-hmm. they may take. But whoever has taken EMAS solution on premise, there there is no competition, so they are just to use only uh, our EMAS solution. Okay. They are not taking any other solution. But in these signature, taking multiple vendor is always possible. Okay, so in 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 e sign, uh, then generally there are multiple uh, 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 suppliers. So uh, do you do you have a so uh, what I understand is E Mutra has one of the best e signs in India, right? As as an Indian player. So do you have some uh, 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 data set around what was the wallet share for say one of your bank top banks uh, maybe three years back and what would be it now? Is it like Uh, the direction is it moving uh, towards like a higher share you have been able to get in that bank no wallet share we do not have because nobody shares the data but three year back if you see because of the other uncertainty at that time we were not offering e sign services in between for some time mm-hmm. we started getting our volumes are constantly improving that's what we are monitoring and not the wallet share at all Understood, understood, understood. And just one last thing in 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 your DRHP, I was just going through. So there was a company uh, 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 which had a large concentration, Blue Sky Infotech, right? So uh, just wanted to understand how does it work? It's it, Blue Sky Infotech is also a company which buys uh, DSC from you in wholesale, right? Like a normal uh, normal uh, 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 reseller, any other reseller. It's the same pricing, or is it's there a different mechanism there? No, no, it's the same pricing. 
but gradually consciously we are reducing the purchase from uh, purchased by blue stain product right? so okay. that's why if you see the over the years when in this year end the overall uh, transaction with blue stain could be much lower than what it was last year but but i understand that is one of the group companies right like it's it's with yeah, the group right yeah. okay but uh, so what is the difference why can't that be uh, taken as a direct customer why can't that be in house rather than going through that channel what what, what how does uh, blue sky infotech help us no no it was for historical reason it was set up they said being explained earlier also i will again explain to you because we wanted to understand the, because we were earlier selling only channel you see three four year back we were only selling channel we were not selling retail we were not selling to second tier partners also we okay. were selling only to major partners so okay. but at the time the major partners several time when the price problem came they created trouble so that's why we wanted to understand the retail business understand the sub partner business and all that so that's why we come up to that on a totally arms length basis So then, and at that time, the purpose was also there because the rules of approving the digital signature were all lot of physical papers. So physically, paper need to be corrected. It has to be attested by a sub-bar, attested by the RA, and all that. Then, in 2019, end all these regulations also changed. So that way, the need for this has gradually changed. So that's where going forward, we feel directly lot of things can be done by the Mudra itself. So that's why the blue sky may not be doing. Got it, got it. This is very helpful. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time, I press star and one on their touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Saran Sanil. with rw investment advisors please go ahead uh, thank you for the follow up opportunity sir anything to call out on the other expenses side because we see the, uh, on a viewer basis it grown way right? anything to call out that on the other expenses side so the other expenses because as i said because we are establishing number of officers number of officers so that's where and more people are there with the company that's why the other expense also going up so other than that there is no specific peculiar reason for it to grow go up or anything so what would be the main component of the other expense all other thing other than salary whatever is there no all uh, electricity bill then the bus transportation what we provide to the employees then marketing so many things Right, so because when we see in the annual report on the other operating expenses, we could see you know mainly the commissions was a big component. But now that you said that you know setting up office, no, no, the operating expense is separate, other expense is separate. Right. Yeah. Operating expense is a direct expense relating to sales, which consists of two three things. Whenever on any sale any hardware component is involved, we purchase those hardware. No, we don't manufacture it, so that becomes an operating expense. Similarly, when we never pay any partner commission for a particular sale, so those things, for example, even in enterprise, we several times pay 20% partner commission. Similarly, in channel also we pay partner commission. So those commissions are all directly related to sale. That is what becomes operating expenses. The other expenses are the other administration, selling, and various other expenses. Okay, sound is good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Deep Master with one of financial consultants. Please go ahead. Um, hi, uh, I just wanted to uh, you know understand a bit more about your enterprise business in terms of you know kind of how it uh, it be positioned versus someone like a DocuSign. So if you could kind of you know just uh, kind of describe where you would compete with someone like DocuSign or sort of where you rank on the enterprise space versus some of the other larger players. I mean, you know, what are the sort of USPs that you can kind of bring? to large enterprises yeah on the enterprise solution i think this is more in context of em sign up which is our e signature yeah. workflow and paper process transformation product there uh, in terms of basically how we are positioning ourselves docusign position itself as a general purpose contracting platform whereas we have sort of verticalized the whole offering to suit specific industries and more specifically industries such as banking and financial services where we have a specific version 
they right. also offer sort of on-prem private cloud deployment ability to you know give a lot of flexibility to clients which DocuSign does not offer because it's completely on shared cloud and our whole platform relies on this identity backed digital signature so when you sign a document you see there's an identity link like aadhar or pan or whatever DocuSign is a simple type as you sign electronic signature so right. except in us market pretty much the rest of the world relies on this identity backed digital signature for you know authenticating or basically uh, ensuring legal validity of transactions and that's what gives us sort of you know unique advantages when we go and position to all of these regulated industries and primarily the focus is on bfsi right similarly now we are undertaking efforts for pharma insurance the pharma again also there's a lot of regulation there's compliance requirements and also insurance also you know there are which are again a regulated industry right so that's how we are distinguishing ourselves as far as the recognition goes on gartner we are sort of lying alongside you know some of these global players as a global full service enterprise for flow platform and the kind of customers we've got over the years are also fairly marquee names with which we are able to penetrate various markets so thanks that's very helpful so who are the other key players be on the identity back side uh, in terms of digital signatures and authentication sorry come again Who is the uh, so apart from Docu? I mean, DocuSign, like you said, is not in the identity-backed digital signature. So, who are the key players that we would sort of compete with on that side uh, in the non-US markets? Non-US regionally, there are smaller players who build some small platform to cater to specific use cases, but nothing as comprehensive right. as the one that we have, or you know, for instance, the other big companies. Are, right? Okay, and so there's no large uh, global player sort of spanning across uh, geographies in this particular offering. Yeah, so it's DocuSign and typically Adobe. Adobe Sign also right. is a, another product, but these are the two names that we typically encounter when we you know, talk to global companies. And so, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to turn the call over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, gentlemen. Yeah. So I would like to thank everybody for joining the call. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with our investor relationship advisors. And thank you once again, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Dollar Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.